Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from the AI Conf in San Francisco. I'm here with Amir from Intel. Amir, how are you doing? Very good. So Excited you're, to be here. you're in a kind of a new group at Intel. I mean, Intel's got a lot of new stuff going on around AI, but can you unpack a little bit about what you guys do in your group? Um, so the new group uh, that you mentioned is called the AIPG, and it stands for Artificial Intelligence Products Group. And it's a full vertical business unit that um, has um, engineering of various sorts. It has hardware, uh, silicon, uh, low-level software, high-level software, uh, machine learning algorithms, all the way up to vertical solutions for different uh, problem domains, such as images, speech, text, consumer devices, medical, financial, government, and so forth. So when you say you're a stack, you, you really are from the hardware all the way through software and then you can focus that in on different industry verticals as well? That's right, it's somewhat unusual for a company such as Intel um, to have a vertical business unit like that, but uh, it's a sign of the times. The, uh, the needs, the business needs are pretty significant and industry is very rapidly adopting this technology and uh, a vertical business unit uh, with all the stuff that you would potentially need as a business is a better way to address these needs quickly and make it less painful for, for businesses to adopt the technology. And as the CTO for this group, you're kind of setting the technical direction of where you'd like to see the product group go. That's is right, that, yes. So, so where are you guys going? So the remarkable thing uh, about, and why I'm very excited to be at Intel uh, now, in this moment in history, there's a long and storied history to AI and computation. And I think this is a kind of a unique moment. Uh, it's not clear how it's going to pan out, but it looks very promising. And what's interesting today is that Intel, the iconic chip manufacturer, long history of success, most of the world's compute runs on Intel processors, is actually building neural network processors. It's making silicon that's dedicated to processing deep learning networks, which is basically neural networks rebranded. And, and processing it at high speeds. So it's, yes. it, it can be like a real-time stream. Is that where we're getting to with AI, that it'll be instantaneous um, that's, processing? That's one of the aspects. The way There's different ways to uh, break up the AI workloads into different areas. Um, the way we think of it is there's uh, learning and then there's inference. The learning portion of the workflow is you have a distribution of data, whether it's um, images on the internet or it's uh, video you, got, you recorded when you were driving your car around. Um, you learn the statistics of that data and you learn from it. So you learn a neural network model and then you have inference where you have this learned model and you want to perform actions like what's in this image? Is it a cat and dog? Where are they in the image? Um, what does this audio, uh, how do you translate this audio into text? How do you translate this text from one language to the next? Those are inference actions. So this is one way we look at it and each piece potentially requires different kinds of silicon. The silicon, the first piece of silicon that we're going to release that's a dedicated neural network processor is more uh, to address the, uh, the, the learning side, which is very compute intensive and has very stringent constraints. Uh, it has to be distributed, uh, it has to be scalable, robust, and so forth. So this Crest series is this neural network processor that um, uh, the technology was purchased uh, from my startup, Nirvana. So I was at a startup mm -hmm. prior to Intel, and uh, Intel is b making it Intel quality. So they can sell it to millions of businesses, hopefully. And hopefully we'll see um, this, this learning processor and data centers, and in the future we'll see other kinds of processors that are uh, modifications or uh, specialized for different kinds of workloads. Like, like FP FPGAs and things like that, are they in your group as well? Uh, so FPGAs, uh, it's a large division at Intel. It was a purchase, uh, Altera was purchased by Intel. So it's a separate division, but they have very interesting AI products. So FPGAs are um, reconfigurable, fine-grained, distributed fabrics. If you look at the very small, uh, at the very small scale, the FPGA uh, processing element is essentially uh, a multiply and add and a lookup. And if you look at the elements of a neural network, that's exactly what a neural network uh, element is. So uh, neural neural network problems translate very naturally to uh, FPGAs, and FPGAs are highly scalable. They have great I/O. They have very low latency. Um, so there, there are use cases where FPGAs excel. Um, there's other products at Intel, and the main product is actually Xeon. It's the CPU. Right. And we can right. talk about that more. Right. So you you really have, I mean, Intel really has an offering all across and up the stack. 
You not only go up, you go across as well. That's right. So um, the one thing that we know about the AI um, area today um, is that it's changing rapidly, and we should expect it to continue to change quite rapidly. So there are potentially multiple trajectories uh, on which AI will evolve. Uh, evolve. And one is uh, the trajectory, which is good for my, uh, my group's processor, the Crest, is lots of compute. You have more data, you do more multiplies and adds, you get better training results with more data. That's one trajectory. The other trajectory is that um, businesses are adopting this technology, and uh, it's not just multiplies and adds. It's not just neural networks. If you want to deploy a speech engine on the web, if you want to have an autonomous car, that is very safe and reliable. There's lots of software and infrastructure that um, is required to make it successful. And as people start to adopt AI technologies, they realize that there is this hurdle. And it's not just the machine learning component. It's all the other stuff. And there's a lot of it. And that all runs on Xeons, on CPUs, because it's searching, sorting, simulating databases, serving web pages, finite state machines lots of things that are not neural networks that are really essential for deploying a successful product. So it sounds like we're at a point in time where all the technology is kind of coalescing and coming together to make AI a real reality. Is anyone really doing something novel and mind-bending yet with AI? That's a great question. So um, I've been living in, in this area for the last 10 years in grad school and I was very lucky in my uh, graduate program. I was uh, around the luminaries of the field uh, today, like Jeff Hinton and others. Jeff Hinton used to tease me because I used to work on Wall Street. It's like, what are you doing here? Why are you studying neuroscience? So uh, I kind of I was uh, in this environment. And I just saw the gradual improvement over the last 10 years. And it's uh, this renaissance of uh, neural networks started around 2006 in Canada, actually. And uh, so for me, it's just been a continual improvement over time. There has been some seminal changes where one algorithm all of a sudden was a lot better than the previous one. Um, so to me, it doesn't seem like a huge discontinuity where there was no AI before and now there's AI. Um, and I see that also continuing in the future. We're not going to have autonomous driving in a couple of years. It's going to take a long time. Siri is going to get better. Cars are going to have better features. Your services are going to get better but you're not going to have robots wandering uh, 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 around and, and... Stealing jobs from people. Stealing jobs from people. That's yeah. um, at least, uh, I don't know how long in the future. Are we going to have to have an ethical discussion about all this as well? I mean, I, I mean, technology sounds like we can get there in the next few years, but are we ready culturally and ethically about how AI is deployed and used? I mean, you can think about like a policing force using AI to detect, you know, things that could have built-in bias with them. You know? Absolutely, yes. There are, it's not, potentially not in uh, what's in the mainstream press that we had, we're going to have killer robots or we're going to have robots that are going to um, take over the world, um, Terminator style. It's a more uh, subtle issue such as pr data privacy and security and HIPAA of, of that nature. Um, AI algorithms are just machine learning algorithms that have evolved in the last couple of years to become a lot better. So the issues that existed before uh, still exist today and will still be thorny issues in the future that will need policing, regulation, and so forth. But it's not something that is um, completely new and intractable yeah. and we have to be very alarmed by. Therefore, humans are always going to kind of be in that loop. Yes, I think so. And I've joked, potentially it's not funny, but uh, if the robots do take over, they will immediately realize that humans are very useful. Um, we're very power efficient. They'll give us jobs. No, they'll build humans. They'll, the robots will start building humans. So yeah, don't be worried. <laughs> this is a very strange dystopian future. Uh, uh, yeah, it could, yeah, it could be a good movie. Yes, yeah. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. So if we were to sit down 12 months from now here, what would you like to say has changed for Intel and your product group at that time mm -hmm. during that 12 months? And what would you like to see change significantly in the industry as well? So twofold, Intel and then the industry. Um, so uh, quite a lot, I've been at Intel for a year and it's really remarkable how far we've come along in just this year. Um, the CEO is well versed in AI and is uh, Brian Krasanich and he understands the, it's a very treacherous landscape. You know, you hear hype, you hear um, um, 
this algorithm is going to revolutionize, we're going to cure cancer, this and that. And what's happened in the last year is that we have a very grounded view of AI, that things are going to happen along some progression, that we're going to have level three autonomy in cars by 2025, not level five by 2020. So um, we have, we're very pragmatic. Um, Intel is a large business. So in order for AI to be relevant for Intel, um, it has to be big. And uh, over the last year, it has, uh, it's been the case that um, this use case, Intel has discovered by talking to its customers and asking what do you need, that this is an enormous use case for them. So, um, and they've acted really quickly. They've created this new business unit. They've had made several acquisitions, including Mobileye, my company Nirvana, Movidius, and other very interesting technology that they purchased. Um, so that's been the last year. I think in the next year, I would just want more of the same. Um, we, are, we are building really great products for our customers. Um, since joining Intel, um, I realized that customers of Intel have had a really great experience with this company for a long period. So you have ready access to great feedback from all levels of enterprise customers, CSPs, cloud service providers, uh, academic relationships. Um, you're just, you're given, you have all the information you need, so you just have to act and execute and build really good products. So basically more of the same um, for the next year. We just want to grow this business and continue to get feedback from customers and bring them silicon, get feedback, maybe they'll hate it, maybe they'll love it um, and uh, evolve. And then the industry? What would you like to see change in the industry significantly? Um, I think things are going pretty well. Uh, so for example, what would you think is uh, something that would like, be of concern? Like the application of maybe AI in healthcare or you know, uh, maybe solving the fake news problem with blockchain and AI combined or something like that. Yeah, so yeah, this is a great, so medicine, uh, these are material things. So there's, you know, you talk about hype and robots and so forth, but again, there's, there's gradual uh, improvements and some of the improvements are, you know, jumps uh, in all areas in medicine. So one concrete area is uh, diagnosing um, uh, basically diabetes through looking at a retina. So there's this thing called diabetic retinopathy where evidence of diabetes appears early on in your um, retina. You can see it in the fundus image. I'm a, a visual neuroscientist before, uh, yeah. before Intel I studied the, the visual system. So uh, the, this part of the head and as well as the retina which is part of the brain. So you can take images of the, uh, the, the eye, the fundus, and you can use a neural network to to find trouble spots that are very early indicators of diabetes. So this is a material change. Uh, it's a simple idea, but it's really material. It's going to help people a, a great deal, and it's available today. Excellent. Well, Amir, we look forward to that conversation 12 months from now. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.